Hello everyone, Antasil here, and we're playing as Finland today. So much to do with Finland, so let's get right into it. Uh, as the title suggests, I will be looking at the secret focus to form the Kingdom of Finland. Now don't get your hopes up, it's just that one focus, there isn't a hidden focus tree or anything, but it looks kind of cool and it has some nice bonuses. We'll also be looking at some Finnish achievements here. There's quite a lot by now, and some of them uh, require you to recapitulate the Soviet Union. We might get around to that, but as an aligned, it's going to be tricky. We're going to focus on no one crosses the finish line and lone wolf. So staying neutral and hold out against the Soviet Union, and possibly win against the Soviet Union. We'll see about that. Now you can get uh, a lot of achievements with the not-so-neutral path. But I think Finnish neutrality is just a bit cooler. The secret focus that will allow you to form a monarchy is right below this one. And it unlocks if you reach this point with your original leader in place. He's pretty terrible, so most guides will let you switch him out. And it's actually the smarter thing to do. Still, we're going to stick with Peter Evind Svinhuvut. This focus uh, doesn't look that far down, but this one here, Expand State Military Factories, requires you to have researched Construction 4. I guess we could rush it, but uh, there's really no point. We'll get around to it eventually. Finland, getting to 1941 and 1944, etc. It's, it's just going to be a long game. We'll start with the basic research. Research is actually kind of important in this game, so I'll try to show as much of it as I can. We'll start with one civilian factory, and one military factory, and one, two, three dockyards. Why dockyards? We have a minuscule navy, and if we make it just a tiny bit larger, we might be able to hold out better here. Now the achievement, no one crosses the finish line, requires you not to lose control of any course. And the big challenge here is Aland. It is a demilitarized zone, which uh, means we cannot garrison it until war breaks out and the Soviets do love their naval invasions. If you're unlucky, uh, they'll naval invade before you can get your first troop in and that would just be a shame. Going to start our equipment with two on guns, one on support equipment and we'll create some lines for support artillery, support anti-air and the early truck. We need trains eventually, we'll get around to that. Create about uh, 30, 40 convoys. By that time we should be able to uh, create more fleet. Speaking of the fleet, we'll set automatic split off enabled and we'll exercise them until we have 10 experience. The regular army will just exercise to level 3. We'll assign these to Erik Heinrichs under the field marshalship of Motherheim. That's the setup. The real challenge of holding against the Soviet Union on non-aligned is manpower. These units that we have are barely equipped. We can't get a lot more and we're already on limited conscription. So we need some manpower bonuses and we're going to pretty much hold this line with one unit per tile, sometimes two. In case you're not aware, leaders in Finland always have a personal agenda which will either raise or lower their uh, confidence, well, the people's confidence in them. And for Peter Evind, we require to have less than 1% combined of communism and democracy, which basically means we need to ban them both. Finnish neutrality is in, and we'll go for political unity. We have more than enough naval experience, so we'll just stop the exercises and these ships will repair. For research, um, you want to go for mechanical computing. At some point you'll get a bonus and then you'll go for computing machine. Why is that important? In this case, we need computing machine because it's a requirement for this research slot. Political unity is in and will align Agrarian League, Finnish Swedish People's Party, railways and infrastructure and repurpose small industries. One, two, three, four. We can also get an advisor now. There's a lot of good choices. Um, not so obvious one is this one, the Nationalist Lutheran Priest. He gives weekly manpower and I just can't pass that up. 
He also gives fascism support, which we don't want. So here's our first stability hit, ban fascism. Aligning the Agrarian League gives access to this guy. Agrarian nationalist, political power game, consumer gets factories bonus and max factories in a state. What's not to like? Fun fact, I failed in my first test run of neutral Finland and efficient strategy gaming got me on the right track with a few tricks that I'm using here too. Luferian Priest is one of his, of course. I'll leave a link in the description and be sure to check him out as well. We got another focus and another advisor, possibly, well, we're getting the traditional theorist. Now to stop this one from lowering, we'll start um, anti-democratic raids. Construction one is in. We still need to develop tanks, but I'd like to get those ships on the way. So I'll research torpedoes. Not going to use the raiding fleet. Um, it's not going to upgrade to any significant stuff anyway. I could use the research bonus, which is nice, but I need PP. So that's my choice here. Heinrichs here is going to get Winter Expert and Adaptable for me. And Mannerheim I'm going to put on Unyielding Defender and Organization first. I'm a big fan of Charismatic for the Division Recovery Rate, but we're going to get that elsewhere. And Reinforce is nice too. 150 PP and we'll get Partial Mobilization. More economy is going to take a little longer. Balance of power is currently stable because the combined communism and democracy is less than 10%. We'll ban them later once I have a few other PP picks done. We need to increase public trust uh, to get all nice kinds of bonuses for manpower and stability. Repurpose small industries is done. <clears throat> we'll now do enhanced southern infrastructure, industrial development, Valsala Radio Sonde Tres and Bank of Aland. Presidential terms come to an end and we have to stick with Sivinhoofdhut. We could pick the other guy, he's actually better, but we need him for the monarchy path. That last focus got us infrastructure effort, infrastructure construction speed. We do have a few infrastructure wish lists coming up, so let's plan them. We need a railroad to connect to the port here in Petsamo. We need a supply hub somewhere to cover this dead zone here. Um, I just usually put it over here. Defensively, it's good enough. It seems quite close to this one, but it really serves the front line. Probably best to connect it from two sides. 1936 destroyer. Now that we have a good destroyer to make 1936 destroyer, light battery, and torpedo launcher. I stole this design from Bitter Steel. And we will produce it with the raiding fleets. We need destroyers there because we basically have just two big ships and they need some screens. 200 PP, and this is the time to get Karl Gustav Mannerheim into our cabinets as chief of the army. Bank of Aland is done. We'll increase military budget and do Suomen Maivoimat for some military factories. We'll also ban communism. Getting a little steel from Sweden. And picking professional officer corps. We can now also ban democratic parties. It looks bad on our stability, but at least the public trust is now getting better. We can help them out a bit by entice the masses. Once the 50 PP is, is kind of worth it. Might even do the 100 PP. Things are getting less urgent to follow the exact line here. We'll do national unity and get those um, manpower bonuses so we can start building up our army. Also get political loyalty here. Building supply hubs, so we'll do, of course, reorganized railway systems. It's national unity and we'll arm the Lotte Svert. Political power picks are becoming less urgent. We do need quite a stockpile of political power, so we could assign our research here to the artillery manufacturer. In fact, we'll do that. We also have computing machines, so we can get radio with a bonus and we can get the research slot later. 
getting some manpower in, so let's make the most of it. I'm going to work with two templates here primarily, so I'm removing the other ones. I'm giving this one the shuffle icon. It's my reserve template icon. And this will be our main template. I'll just give it the moose icon here because it's oh so cool. Make these guys elite and the other ones reserve. We'll be doing most of the fighting with these uh, guys, the mooses, and these ones will fill up the lines. I already told you we're going to put one unit per tile, and well, we're just going to use these guys to stand in the way of tiles that are barely going to get attacked. <clears throat> we now have 10 of the mooses. Convert a few more of these, uh, like 13 in total. Yeah. I'll separate them for now, but I'll put them in the same army later and exercise them again. See if I can get a few more of those reserve templates out. I do need to have a stockpile of manpower, otherwise my destroyers will not get deployed. Now how am I going to deploy those troops if I'm going to put one unit per tile and I want a specific unit on a specific tile? Well, I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to use a GZ Field Marshal order. I'm going to assign the general with a garrison order here in Australia. He's never going to be able to do that. And the Field Marshal is going to get an order here. I'll also put these guys on a garrison here in Scotland. Doesn't really matter. The point is that these guys are assigned to an order that they cannot execute. Then the Field Marshal will get the big order on the Russians. And now you can just put these guys on tiles. And I'm just going to manually assign them here. Now it's absolutely essential that we keep Petsamo and the tile below it. Keep one in reserve here on uh, Vipuri. And that'll be it for now. Arm not as fert, and we'll get the research slot immediately. Starting to look something like this. That looks very precarious, but trust me, it will hold. Except, of course, that I still left a gap here. I need a unit. That's the research slot. We'll also get union of Finnish brothers in arms for more manpower. I've got the entire line here. You might think this is a bit weak, but trust me, it will hold. This is um, precarious, but we'll manage it. This is an absolute priority, so they get two of the good units each. each. And if you're saying, Andesil, you're forgetting port guards. Um, no, I'm not forgetting them. It's just my last priority. We're getting a few more units in, and they're going to um, guard the ports. Don't forget to keep up with your bonuses from the MIOs once you get them. We'll get a military theorist and we'll get the superior firepower doctrine. Got our wish list done here, um, infrastructure wise, so the rest will be military factories. Union of Finnish Brothers in Arms is done. Before the war starts, we want Paramis Devils, which will give us an extra unit. Actually, a pretty good one. We can now get a few factories, and what we also need is refresher exercises. It requires 25% world tension, so let's just get that while it's hot. But here we are required to have a certain world tension, so the order of focuses might not be the same anymore. So this is where my list will end. Getting a few more of these defensive units in. Don't forget to exercise and we'll spread them out over the ports. Right, that's it. We have the 16 reserve units that we need and the 13 reserve, uh, official units that we want. For now we'll be training the official units of course and those reserve units can just stay where they are. We've got three here on Turku, and two of them will try to get um, to Aland. Best of luck to you with that. We'll now assign everyone to the same army, and they'll be uh, our defense guys. Refresher exercises are done. 
not going to rely on a single focus line now. There's lots of good stuff left. Jaeger movement gives you bonuses as well as Winter Warfare. Cold Front, Utilize Sami, Alcoholic, uh, Extra Military Factories, so much good stuff. Getting an Infantry Expert requires you to get your Jaeger movement, so we'll get that one eventually. We'll do the power plant first so we can get this one later. The construction company here requires you to have construction free. And we need construction four later on anyway, so we'll get that at. To get some really cool bonuses, we also need the Lone Wolf. So reach out to Scandinavia and Moderate Politics are on the wish list. Still need Parmy's Devil. Make some changes to this template here. We're going to add support anti-air, cavalry recon, and a combat support battalion of artillery, making it a 15 whiff, which is kind of optimized for defense in forests. Later on, we'll add the basic medium flame tanks. Let's hope we have the manpower for this. Try to get at least that third one for superior firepower to mobile defense. That's engineer two. We'll get the trucks now. And we'll also start designing a medium flame tank. You've seen it before, I'll show it again. Light fixed superstructure, flamethrowers, the flame support company role. Uh, radio's not necessary, but it gives some extra defense. Lots of ammunition storage, we need to keep burning. Bogey suspension, I like to go for welded armor. It's a bit more expensive, but it's worth it. And diesel engine, 5.25 costs for quite some good bonuses. We'll put all of our extra factories on them now so we can um, get that done. We get base stability and war support from getting an alcohol company. Well, for 35 days, I'm not gonna say no to that. Let's get the medium flame tank into our regular divisions. So at least we know how much manpower we're going to suffer. Fleet here is looking nicely. We'll put them on strike force here because that gives us the most chance of preventing a naval invasion. And that's the alcohol. We'll get the Jaeger movement next. Kind of forgot about that, but keep up with your fuel refining, otherwise we have to import too much fuel. 50 experience. We also want static warfare before we continue with our doctrines. And as we can see, the medium flame tank deficit has all but disappeared. So let's get back to regular production. Jaeger movement, and we'll get found Poyolan Voima, which will give us, give us a lot more factories in five states because we built a little infrastructure there. Jaeger movement allows us to get the infantry expert. Found Poyolan Voima is done. Get Parmi's Devils now because it's not going to take much longer. We can get the construction company in here as well. And Voima, which will also give us minus 15% consumer goods. This is actually pretty nice. Let's make another check of our front line. You could build forts if you're not sure this is going to work, but I think it is going to work. And I've got flame tanks, which is better than forts. Just adding military factories to queues. I need stockpiles for when I get more troops. I like to get muddy tactics here. Not sure if I'm going to get that before the war kicks off. It's a matter of priorities. Here goes World War II. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that you can get Estonia here once world tension gets over 70%. They could agree to be annexed by you, which will make the game a lot more easy easy to defend here, even against the Soviets, especially once they're busy with you. Problem is, usually Estonia is annexed by the time the Soviets cause 70% world tension. But if it works, it works. We have some cool guys here, prisoners, and we'll put them on this hotspot here, because that's where things get dicey, if they get dicey. Poland has capitulated, fall of Warsaw, and pressure on the Benelux. Multi-tactics, probably going to be in time. Nope, we're not. Soviets demand Karalia. Let them come if they dare. 
And here we are. Multi tactics is almost done. Not quite yet. Speed down, cut them to pieces, and keep the game paused. First things first. Three units are here on Turku. Select two of them and ship them off to Aland. And um, thoughts and prayers, boys. Thoughts and prayers. We'll go to War Economy because Total Mobilization requires me to have a larger stability percentage. War Economy is good enough. We'll also go to Extensive Conscription. We'll get the Army Regrouping Genius. And we're already out of PP, but the next one will be the Concealment Expert. We have no air power at this, to speak of at this time. Now, let's see how the front lines are doing. We might have a problem here, but I think we should be fine. These bubbles will turn green soon enough. Here comes the cavalry. These guys actually made it. Um, that's the first time in quite a few test runs that they did. Usually they'll get some damage, which is why I give them two. Now let's look at the green bubbles. This is looking tight, but we have one reserve unit. Let's get him over there. We might have to do some rotation here. Oof, he's getting um, hammered. How's that happening? This is a good unit. We'll start getting a few of these reserve um, the new guys out of in the reserve. Well, in retrospect, two units here would have been better. And he's attacking Sala. So I might have to reinforce that. How's this one doing here? Yeah, all right. Multi tactics and the armored train. We can get a lot more winter warfare bonuses, but eh, frankly, we're already very good there. Going to do cry for help for daily, uh, weekly manpower. <clears throat> Snipers are effective, and we should hand out more arms to the hunters. Now that our troops are safely on the Gulf of Bot Botnia, we'll put our fleet on convoy raiding. Trust me, we'll get a lot of Soviet convoys. Well, this point here is tighter than I expected. A fort m might have been nice, but Keeping one of those units in reserve was more, all that I needed. No, 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 not all of you, just this one. But with some rotation, we're, we're fine. Usually I get attacked in Pizzamo here, and we're doing a lot better there. So it's situational, you just have to be on your toes. Front's already stabilized. We suffered 6k casualties, and the Soviets are almost at 100. This is usually also a high uh, hot point, so that's where I put the prisoners. And we can now get the concealment expert. Now basically holding out here until, what is it? 1944 will get you the no one crosses the finish line achievement. But you know, where's the fun in that? Simo Haya. The White Death is the embodiment of Finland. Well, that's my choice. And this is plainly stupid. That's a cry for help. Salvage and retool is good. Intelligence is good. Winter warfare is good. All these things are good. Some more industry. Still the Estonia thing. And we want to get to Long Wolf eventually. We'll get to winter warfare first. We're getting some communist influence here. Best to use anti-communist raids once it hits 10% or well, you'll lose your precious public trust. Line is holding comfortably. It's time to think about counterattacks. We've got um, six new units here on Vipur and training six more. Giving them to a separate general here. I'd like to use Arna here because he has Mountaineer Commando for out of supply. The occasional naval battle here. Sinking convoys, 
sinking lots of convoys. 15 convoys sunk. <laughs> Do long range patrols later. Let's get the winter wolf. And I'm going to get mountaineers just to get a few more bonuses on rangers. See if I can push these guys out of Leningrad. I mean, ordinarily I wouldn't be able to, but I just have such a stupid amount of bonuses here. Yeah, a bit too early, I guess. Attacking with a few more units now. And they just can't reinforce it in time. I've seized Leningrad. A major victory for the Finns. We'll just leave the regular units in place here to guard. As you can see, um, Winter Warfare is really no longer the Soviet expertise. Cutting through them like they're not even there. We've got the Lone Wolf. We can do cooperation with Germany when we're not fighting the Winter War. We need the armistice for that. It's actually mostly a historical focus. It helps us, but it also forces us to declare war on the Soviets again. So be sure you want to do that. Here's another one, Militarized Society. It requires you to be on adult adults serf, and then it will mitigate all the negative effects of all adult serf. And it will give you access to Greater Finland. We're not ready to go there just yet. We'll just um, do the other stuff first. Long range patrols, for instance. Now I've cut off this northern piece of Russia. And we'll clean it up first. There's a decision here where we can demand peace negotiations. So we kind of don't want to do that yet. I want to get all my future cores in first. My constant fuel problems necessitate me to do synthetic oil experiments. I can't always just import oil. That's just um, too risky. Another thing you can do here in the balance of power is for military government, you'll get Mannerheim as your leader. It's actually pretty strong, but as I said, I don't want to get rid of my leader, so we're not doing that. Anti-communist raids. Our leader is in trouble again and will entice the masses or appeal to finish the spirit yeah sure passive defense more 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 and we cleaned up this pocket means these troops are free to do something else we're going to grab the petrovodosk supply hub fuel refining done I'm getting construction four so we can go for the monarchy focus i want to be able to show that off it's a tough fight here. Also because I'm once again out of fuel. Ah, Iran does not require convoys. Good, good. Well, we finally got that supply up. That was a lot more effort than I anticipated. Let's get it connected immediately. Now, technically, these guys are not cut off, but they'll get weaker from not having supply. So I will try to get through this river line up here, grab possibly the supply hub, but at least make the encirclement and cut them off. And there is another nice encirclement. fleet has um, leveled up nicely. Aland is safe. I have not seen a single naval invasion. Now mind you, in all of my test runs I've seen naval invasions, even with this naval strategy. So this is not foolproof. Just be prepare, prepared to be naval invaded. Well, that was a very short naval invasion. Oh, no, nope, they're here. And they're attacking my port guard. Luckily I have reserves. Naval invasion cleaned out. Well, that's the north cleared up. All right, so we've cleaned up a lot of Soviet territory. This is the point where you can safely click the peace negotiations and you'll get some territorial gains as well. You can then do cooperate with Germany and do a historic Barbarossa. 
However, what you can also do is just stay in this war until Germany declares on their own. That way, you'll also have already have massive war participation and you'll get a lot more of the Soviet Union than you would otherwise get. Germany is going to steamroll the Soviets because, well, they already lost a million against us. And we want a piece of that pie. So I'm going to stick around in this war until the very end. Right, so recap. If you're going for a lone wolf and no one crosses the finish line, this is a good moment to start making peace with the, with the Soviet Union. We got construction four, which is important for our um, venture into monarchism. Power from the dams is also a very good one. We'll get it soon, but I want to show off the monarchy. So let's go expand state military factories. Snagner supply hub still need to connect it. Yeah. And we can do a new course for Kokumus. That's a new course for Kokumus. And here we have a new focus, the Finnish throne. Your last focus, Bear. Cool. Unexpected bonus. I managed to get the Volokta supply hub. And here come the cavalry, or in this case, the Germans. Cooperation with Germany is bypass. It's a pretty good focus, really, so it's a bit of a shame. But at least we'll be able to um, get massive war participation here. That's another supply up. Really, that's how you attack Soviets. You hop from supply hub to supply hub. See if we can make it to Moscow. Get over there. Ah, cool, the Finnish throne is done. Kingdom of Finland. We can also become the Greater Kingdom of Finland. We need militarized society for that, or go through all of these. Uh, it's not so bad either, but I'd like to get militarized society for the obvious bonuses. So we'll go to all adults serve and do militarized society. We now have a king, well, or actually a prince, Wolfgang von Hesse, crown prince of Finland. We're also getting everything from his personal agenda and reduced cost for take states action in peace conferences. Woohoo! I don't think I've ever walked this fast to Moscow. And here we are, Moscow is Finnish! It puts the Soviets on 65% capitulations. Well, it's not that bad. Let's try another collaboration government. That's militarized society. And we now go and can go for the greater Kingdom of Finland. Yeah, let's do that. Once again, Germans failing to take Stalingrad. The fall of Stalingrad. Significant development. Indeed, because we're closing in on the Soviet surrender limit. Greater Finland. We'll do a joint scientific program. The Greater Kingdom of Finland. Oh, so proud. 99%. And here we are. This should be your course. Now, I could puppet the rest, but it's just so much cheaper to grab it because of my special abilities as a leader. So what will I grab? The Greater Kingdom of Finland took 152 states. And we are quite great. Took their navy as well, might actually go for Japan in the sequel. It's not 1944 yet, so no one crosses the finish line would not fire. Uh, this has been my extensive guide into the Greater Kingdom of Finland. If you like this video, please take a moment to press the like button. Leave a comment, subscribe. 
It all helps me to build this channel and reach out to other subscribers. Thanks a lot and see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you.